Chapter 5, Section 4, dealing with rational algebraic expressions. We are ready to delve into Standard 7 a little bit more. We're not doing the blue part today, but we are reducing and evaluating rational expressions, whether the numerator is a mon monomial or polynomial. So let's take a look and see what we have. First of all, a rational algebraic expression is a quotient of polynomials. To simplify rational algebraic expressions, our goal is to 1. Factor the numerator completely, 2. Factor the denominator completely, and 3. Reduce any factors that are the same in the numerator and denominator, but not terms. We can never reduce terms, only factors. So for x squared minus 5x over x squared minus 25, we'll put all our factoring from chapter 4 experience to use here x squared minus 5x is a GCF of x. Factor that out, that leaves us x minus 5. x squared minus 25 is the difference of two perfect squares. That factors into the conjugates, x plus 5, x minus 5. Any factors that are the same in the numerator and denominator, like the x minus 5 terms, anything divided by itself divides out to 1, and that leaves us with our solution, x over x plus 5. So that's simplifying or reducing our first rational algebraic expression. Let's look at our next one. And sometimes these are written a little differently and don't quite look exactly like a fraction. Here we have a polynomial 9x squared plus 6xy minus 3y squared times 12x squared minus 12y squared to the quantity the negative 1 power. That's just another way of writing this the quotient of two polynomials. 9x squared plus 6xy minus 3y squared divided by 12x squared minus 12y squared. So using negative 1 as an exponent again means take the reciprocal of that, which would put this entire polynomial in the denominator, and we have a rational algebraic expression. We need to factor the numerator completely, so starting out with a GCF of 3, that leaves us with 3x squared plus 2xy minus y squared. Denominator will start out with the greatest common factor of 12. And that leaves us x squared minus y squared. Continuing to factor, if we factor the numerator by trial and error, that's going to give us 3x minus y times x plus y. And 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. And the difference of two perfect squares, x squared minus y squared, factors into the conjugates x plus y, x minus y. Now we're going to look for factors that are the same in the numerator and denominator. And any factors that are the same divide out to 1. So there's a factor of 3 in the numerator and denominator that divides out to 1. And a factor of x plus y in the numerator and denominator that divide out to 1. We're left with 3x minus y in the numerator. And 2 times 2, which is 4, times x minus y in the denominator. You can leave it like that, or you can distribute out the 4. Quite often, we'll leave it like that because in future activities, it's easier to work with if we have them factored. All right, a rational function is a function that's defined by a simplified rational expression in one variable. So let f of x represent a rational function f of x is 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 over x to the third plus x squared minus 2x. And our job is to find the domain. Now, when we saw this before, remember that meant what values of x can we not allow, especially when x shows up as a variable in the denominator. And remember, you can't have 0 in the denominator of a fraction whether it's a simple fraction or a ra rational algebraic function. So our job will consist of, again, factoring the numerator completely. The numerator, by trial and error, will factor into 2x minus 1 times x minus 3. And the denominator has a GCF of x. What's left, the x squared plus x minus 2, factors by FOIL backwards into x minus 1 times x plus 2. All right, what we want to do here is we want to find out what values of x would cause some trouble in the denominator. 
First of all, if x was 0, 0 times the rest of the denominator would make the entire denominator 0, so I cannot allow x to be 0. Secondly, x being 0 is fine in the second parentheses, although it's not fine out here. 0 minus 1 would be negative 1. But I don't want x minus 1, that expression, to be 0. And I don't want x plus 2, that expression, to be 0. So it's like using the zero product property, but saying they can't equal 0 as opposed to they are equal to 0. Solving for x, x is equal to 1 and x is negative 2 in each of these factors. So my restrictions on x. x can be anything in the domain, but I cannot allow x to be 0. x cannot equal 1, nor can x equal negative 2. So my domain is all real numbers except for the three we noted above. x cannot be 0, x cannot equal 1, and x cannot equal negative 2. So we might want to think of those kind of as restrictions to our domain. Very important as we continue to work with rational algebraic expressions and equations as we progress through this chapter. To find the zeros of the function f, if there are any, now what would that mean? Well, that means the variables in the numerator, we're going to set them equal to 0, because in that case, 0 divided by anything is 0. So we've already factored the numerator. 0 divided by anything is 0, so to find the zeros, we're going to take the factors of the numerator, 2x minus 1, set that equal to 0, x minus 3, set that equal to 0, solve each of those equations. So 2x is equal to 1. Divide both sides by 2. x is equal to a half. And over here on the right, add 3. x is equal to 3. So those are the zeros of the polynomial function, rational algebraic function. If x is 1 half or if x equals 3, the entire fraction, we will have zeros because 0 divided by anything is 0. All right, let's continue on just with one last example. Uh, I didn't give it an example number, but it's one that students see quite often, and it's important to know to have in your little tool bag of tricks. And what we have is x squared minus 25 over 25 minus x squared. What's significant and important about this example is that the numerator and the denominator are opposites of each other. If I were to add the two of them together, we would get 0. That's opposites or additive inverses. x squared plus negative x squared is 0. 25 plus negative 25 is 0. Quite often when you're reducing an algebraic expression, you will see additive inverses or opposites. So you'll need to know what to do. First of all, you have to recognize that they are opposites. Secondly, in this case, since we have x squared first, and our numerator is a polynomial in simplified order of descending powers, I would suggest switching around the denominator. We do that by factoring out negative 1. If I factor out a negative 1, 25 divided by negative 1 is 20, negative 25. And negative x squared divided by negative 1 is positive x squared. And now what we have is x squared minus 25 divided by x squared minus 25. Anything divided by itself is 1. And 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Again, this happens when we have opposites. If you had negative 5 over positive 5, that would be negative 1. Any number divided by its opposite is negative 1. That's today's look at simplifying rational algebraic expressions.